Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I want to talk about the watches that I own that are not only under $1,000, they're well under $1,000, and that I actually wear way more than you think. Why they're my favorite watches, or some of my favorite watches, and when do I wear them? Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing my Seiko uh, tuna or baby tuna, I'm not sure which one it is exactly. I really like this watch, but it didn't make this list, and I'll let you know why in the video. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. A bunch of cool watches just came in, including this Bell and Ross Diver, the BR Diver with the blue colorway, absolutely lovely, and a different take on the Bell and Ross iconic design. We also got in the Grand Seiko Rika. This is with their beautiful green textured dial. You can really see how Grand Seiko has made a name for themselves on their dials and their overall bang for the buck. It really cannot be beat. And we also got in an iconic Omega Speedmaster. This one is vintage from 1989, which is actually my birth year. Thought of holding on to it, but if I held on to every watch that came in that I liked, I'd be more broke than I actually already am. But it is available for you guys, a beautiful 1989 example of this Omega Speedmaster. But anyway, guys, I'm going to talk about my four favorite watches well under $1,000 that I wear all the time. What are they? Why do I love them? And when do I wear them? Now, this is in no particular order. Now, if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, the first one's going to come in to no shock to you, even though I haven't probably worn it on camera in over a year, and that is my Seiko SKX. Now, this is my first uh, kind of keeper watch that hasn't left my collection at this lower price point. It's discontinued now, uh, but I got it for about 200 bucks back in the day. And it's also the worst watch on this list. It's the, the least accurate the least reliable, but it is my favorite and the one I've had the longest. So why do I wear it? Well, it's an icon. And yes, I know I say icons are boring, but this one speaks to me. I love the blue uh, and red bezel. I love the dive shape. People hate the jingly jangly jubilee bracelet, but I actually find it very supple and comfortable. Even though it's not particularly accurate, mine is running about 25 seconds a day and I have no intention of regulating it, it has never stopped working, never needed a service, nothing bad has ever happened to it. It looks great in every outfit and I can wear it to the beach or I can wear it to dinner. Now, I wear this watch all the time while traveling uh, because even though it's got a lot of sentimental value, uh, when I go to some off the beaten path locations, I don't really have to worry about um, you know, getting robbed. It's, it's really, it's an icon that doesn't cost a lot. It's a watch that watch geeks love and it doesn't cost a lot. And, and even though the new kind of Seiko Turtles and Seiko 5s are way more reliable, they've got the much better 4S uh, movement. They even have manual winding and hacking, whereas mine, you gotta shake it up, um, which is annoying, they just don't have the same charm. I love my SKX, never getting rid of it, even if it eventually bites the dust and dies on me, it's gonna be in my drawer forever. Another one I absolutely adore is, and that I own, is the Hamilton Khaki Field. Now I'm talking about the non-automatic version. I got the manual wind with the Salida. Um, I believe, eh, is it a Salida? It might be an Etika Swatch Group, whatever, they're basically the same thing. Uh, with the green colorway and the green canvas strap. Now, usually with cheap watches or cheaper watches, I always change the strap. I love the canvas strap on this watch. It just completes the look. I got the manual wind because, well, I just love interacting with it. It's also a very smooth movement, makes it thinner. And it's a smaller size, which even though I'm a big guy, this is one of my smaller, smallest watches in my collection. I really enjoy wearing it. Um, now, this one is kind of more like a, a polo type watch. I, I don't really, I don't wear a travel watch as well. Um, you know, it's not the most versatile because it's not particularly dressy for a small watch. And it's not particularly sporty because it's on a strap, but it's got that vintage feel that I absolutely love. It's, it's classic 
kind of it's, it's a classic American GI watch, even though it's made in Switzerland uh, now. It's it's almost like me playing dress up. It's a look that I really like, but I would never spend top dollar on by like buying an IWC Mark 18. But on a $375 Hamilton that I got gray market, why not? I adore it. And then one I wear all the time. You guys have seen it on the videos. My next one is the Tiso PRX. <clears throat> this is my integrated kind of dress sport watch. Um, it's got an, an 80 hour power reserve, so I very rarely have to set it. It feels like a much higher end watch than it actually is. People give it a lot of crap because, you know, the movement has some plastic parts in it. I understand, but it's also built to a certain price point. It wears very comfortably on my wrist. It's the most versatile watch I have because being on a bracelet, I can wear it to the beach or I can sweat in it, or if I just need to go to dinner and it's what I have on, it still looks rather dressy with its design. Um, I, I, what can I say? I just really enjoy wearing this watch because it's one of those watches that I can put on and just not think about. It just fits with what I wear, where I'm going. My overall ethos, I, what can I say? It's one of those, it's nice not having to think about something. And, and that's what I get with the PRX. And then last but not least, a watch I don't wear very often, but uh, that I actually use, even though I don't wear, is my G-Shock. Now, for you G-Shock collectors, don't be mad at me. I have no idea which one, what this one's called. I know it's the classic one. Uh, it's one of the cheap square models. I got it for under 100 bucks. It's always accurate. It has a backlight. It charges with, with the sun. And it's always sitting on my desk. I set all my watches to the G-Shock. And on the very rare occasion, I do like manual labor. Like I uh, work on my car or do some gardening or the very rare times I want to wear a watch to the gym, I slap it on. This probably doesn't get worn more than once or twice a month, but for 90 bucks to have a piece of that G-Shock fun, to kind of use it as a desk clock, it's just, it's fantastic. And when I do wear it, I really do enjoy it. Um, it's just rare that I like the digital look. Now, all these watches get worn way more than like some of my more expensive pieces because the expensive pieces I wear at work and then I keep them at work in my vault. Or I'll bring one out on a Friday um, from work and I'll wear it until Sunday, but I don't bring a selection. I don't keep anything at home. Whereas these inexpensive under thousand dollar watches, I do keep at home. They're kind of spread around my house. So a lot of times I go to the supermarket, I slap on the SKX or, you know, I, you know, going to go out and get a car wash, slap on the G-Shock. I wear these extremely often. I would say these four watches between them probably get worn 20 to 25 times a month. Not to mention I do a lot of traveling and it's nice to have these lower price options um, available because I can still geek out with my watches. I love these watches, but I don't have to worry too much about, uh, you know, losing them or, or, or getting mugged. Watch collecting, uh, it can be fun at all prices. And sometimes I just want to scratch an itch, but I don't want to spend 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000 and buying a G-Shock for 90 bucks and having a ton of fun with it. Well, that works just as well. A lot of the time I almost forgot. Love this watch, love the way it looks, but it's large and massively uncomfortable. It always flops around. It's one of those watches I wish I could enjoy, um, and I enjoy looking at it, but wearing it, don't really love it. In fact, I'm taking it off right now. Sorry about that, almost forgot to mention. Take care. Anyway guys, that's an insight into the watches that I love and that I own that are well under a thousand bucks that I wear all the time. Let me know in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Take care.